Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Block Thrasher Daily Morning Crypto Update, where we are shattering the complexities of crypto with news, commentary, analysis, and education. Listen, I know you're busy, and you don't have the time to go search for the news of the day, so we're going to do that for you. I've realized, just I was thinking about it today, that what we're doing here, basically, is we are documenting day by day by day the massive expansion and growth of the cryptocurrency space as it moves towards total, absolute, 100% adoption. Today is March 9th, 2021. It's another great day for crypto. My name is Justin Cummins, and the outlook on the cryptocurrency space is becoming increasingly Panglossian. Panglossian, that's our word of the day. Let's take a look at that word, P-A-N-G-L-O-S-S-I-A-N, Panglossian. It, it means this, characterized by or given to extreme optimism, especially in the face of unrelieved hardship or adversity. And of course, we've seen within the cryptocurrency space over the years, a lot of hardship and a lot of adversity. People speaking out against it, saying all types of negative things, throwing FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But increasingly, as time goes on, we see those naysayers capitulating one by one by one. And we have some of that today. We've got some great stuff to cover today. In fact, I'm super, super excited about this Atari token. Now, if you're like me, I was a child that grew, you know, I was a child in the 80s. I mean, I was born in the 70s, in the 80s primarily, 80s and 90s, and there's a ton of nostalgia when it comes to Atari. I remember when we went and got our very first Atari. Now, we didn't end up getting the 2600 because we went to the store. Interesting story there as well. We went to the store, and I remember going to Sears, and the salesman was like, yeah, the Atari 2600 is really popular. Lots of people are getting it, but there's this better system called the Atari 5700, and it has better graphics, and it has better technology, and you could do these things with it, and so my family ended up buying the 5700, but that particular model never really took off, and so you couldn't get the games. I mean, there was just a proliferation of games for the 2600, and that's what all my friends had. I couldn't trade with them, and I was super bummed, but it didn't really matter that much at the end of the day because my game was Mrs. Pac-Man. Oh, I love Mrs. Pac-Man. In fact, I could probably beat you at Mrs. Pac-Man to this day because I just played and played and played and played. I loved that game and I know I'm not the only one. So when it comes to Atari and the announcement that we have to look at today, there's a ton of people like me who are just going to have that immediate nostalgic reaction are going to be interested in this thing. So we're going to talk about that. But of, of course, before we do that, we've got our market update. So let's jump into the market update and see what is happening in the world of cryptocurrencies today in regard to prices. Now, we had a bit of a rise last night. Things are looking very good. We've been talking for a while about how the market was just sort of trending sideways. And if we continue to do that, or if we saw an upsurge this month sometime, that is going to be very, very good, a very good sign overall for the cryptocurrency space. Because traditionally speaking, March is a very difficult month. And in fact, it is even the month in which the end of the 2017 bull market occurred on March 12th, which is coming up in just a couple of days. March 12th, 2017, Black Thursday, market drop, Bitcoin price drop by 50%. Well, so far, it's looking like we just might avoid that this time around, and there's a ton of reasons why that probably is the case, and we've talked about that some, and maybe we'll get into some of that today, but let's look at where prices are right now. Right now, Bitcoin, $53,807. $53,807.22. Bitcoin is up 6.5% in the last 24 hours. Looking good. 8.2% last seven days. Moving to Ethereum. Ethereum is $1,811.22. It is up 5.1%. 15.7% in the last seven days. Now, if you haven't been paying attention, of course, that boost is as a result of the announcement that Ethereum will be passing the Ethereum Improvement Proposal EIP-1522, which is going to help reduce transaction fees. Not sure what it's going to do for congestion and some of the other issues Ethereum has been facing, but overall, it's a move in the right direction. It's an improvement that should come into play very soon, and people are going to be happy about that. And so that has caused a little bit of euphoria and the price of Ethereum has risen along with that. Now Binance Coin has been doing very well on the last 24 hours, up 14.2%, up 5.2% in the last seven days. Binance Coin is now $266.62. Cardano, Cardano saw a little bit of a surge in the last 24 hours as well, up 4.2%, now $1.17. Polkadot coming in at number five. Is $35.70, also up in the last 24 hours, 5.2%. XRP, 
uh, it was up on the week 6.7 percent is currently 47 cents but it's pretty much just been sitting right at that price for for quite some time just not able to get back up to 50 cents uniswap Uniswap saw a nice, nice surge up 29.7% this last week, up 1.6% in the last 24 hours. Uniswap is currently $33.06. Litecoin up 12% on the week, $197.44. Chainlink also up 11%, $30.67. Dogecoin saw a little bit of a pump, up 10.9% at $0.05, just over $0.05. cents. And that covers it for the market overview today that is where the prices are at the markets looking very good and as I just continue to mention if we continue to see the market trend sideways or 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 improve and go up that's gonna bode very well I think for this year as a whole okay moving on to the story of the day Decentraland Decentraland's mana token hits a new all-time high with Atari set to build an in-world casino. So Atari has announced that they are going to partner with Decentraland and build an in-game casino, which is very interesting. The value of the Decentraland mana token climbed 31% leading into March 9th, 9th, following news that the classic game manufacturer Atari would set up a gaming casino inside Decentraland's virtual realm. Now look at this Atari site if you're on video. It just, like I said, it just causes this nostalgic reaction. It's just, it's like a beautiful thing. It's like, Atari, awesome. So <laughs> so you can check this out. It's at AtariChain.com. The Atari token, it's so much more than video games. They state, we are building the token that will power the future of the interactive entertainment industry. It's an Ethereum token currently. They have con- the Ethereum contract listed there. And they have a whole bunch of partnerships that they have announced. You can see them here at the, at the, uh, scrolling across the screen on their website. Uh, Game Taco, Bitcoin.com Exchange, there's Chain Games, Engine, Ultra. So very interesting to watch this and see what is going to happen. Obviously, they have some significant brand identity to bring to the table. If we pull up the token on CoinGecko, ATRI is the ticker symbol. It's currently number 246 in market cap it's up 15.8 percent currently at 28 cents so that's something that you can look at it's available on Uniswap if you decide that you want to pick up some of that token so I've talked about Decentraland before and it is also something to keep an eye on one of the early movers within the space we're going to see this space though I think just absolutely explode we've got Atari as we're talking about Decentraland mana we've got engine which is the first token approved by the Japanese government for in-game sale tokenization EFTs things like that so much this is just going to be the whole EFT space and the gaming space these are two areas in particular to watch the DeFi thing of course as well although that is sort of you know a little bit old news now relatively speaking and uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of things happening here with gaming in particular something to watch all right moving on <coughs> parity technologies this one sort of interested me a little bit because one of the things that's plagued cryptocurrency platforms ethereum being probably the primary example one of the things that's plagued these over over time has been sort of this rush to this rush to market and then once that's been done it becomes difficult to make changes we've talked about this quite a bit on this on this uh, channel there needs to be a, a governance system in place in order to make the changes uh, Bitcoin suffers from this as, as well so there's been contentious forks uh, we've seen it with Ethereum with Ethereum and Ethereum class we've seen it with Bitcoin 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 and Bitcoin cash and Bitcoin SV and others and so parity one of the things about polka dot <coughs> sorry a little bit of cough going on here don't worry it's not the covid <clears throat> just uh got a little something stuck in my throat one of the things with polka dot is that i feel like a phenomenal platform in many ways and uh i've talked about this quite a bit but they seem to have done the same thing where they sort of I don't want to go so far as to say they they copied. I mean, everything's open source, so hey, it's good. Do it. But 
they seem to have moved very quickly and there's certain things that now we've seen already within the last couple of months it's this response of oh we need to do that and this is an example of that the development arm behind Polkadot plans to develop and propose a new parachain governance framework called statement Parity Technologies, the company behind Polkadot, is planning to roll out a new parachain governance framework that could enhance the use case of the network. Statement is the first proposed common good parachain for the Polkadot network. Parity Technologies announced Tuesday a common good parachain is a parachain that's granted slots via governance as opposed to the auction mechanism that underlies Polkadot. The auction me method doesn't work effectively for all parachains, i.e. those that could be considered as common goods. Yeah, so this is one of the things that when I did a bunch, I've, I've been writing a deep dive on Polkadot, which I've not released yet, but one of the things that sort of looked to be problematic potentially to me was the system that they have where if you're a, a, a project that wants to develop a, a new coin on the system and you want to connect to Parity's relay chain, which is their primary chain, which is <coughs> sort of where the settlement and the security is provided. Uh, on Cardano, for instance, which is, you know, Polkadot's primary competitor. They have the settlement layer and they have the computation level layer. Well, Parity has a similar thing with the relay chain. So if you're creating a parachain and uh, you want to connect to that relay chain, you have to purchase a slot to get access to it. And that's done through an auction system. And that could be incredibly expensive and sort of prohibitive for certain you know, smaller projects to actually be able to do because it was also limited in number. There's only 100 slots available, though that number could be changed through the governance system within Polkadot. So basically, what this statement thing about is about is uh, uh, providing a system for these parachains to to have a government the governance system, but also be able to get access to those slots without having to go through the auction process that was what was previously required. So in other words, the, the, the sta statement would allow Polkadot to offload many of its core features to special purchase, special purpose parachains while avoid, avoiding the free rider problem. Yeah. So th that's the reason why they did the slot mechanism in the in the first place was because they wanted to, tr to avoid this free rider plot problem that would just you know allow parachains to be created come along uh, attached to their relay chain and then bog down and anyway as we can see things that as are so often the case unfortunately with some crypto projects where they just haven't thought things out in advance enough to sort of and and you know in their favor sometimes it's difficult it can it can be very difficult until you've got something running and going now, uh, again, comparing to Cardano, one of the great things about Cardano is that they built this catalyst governance system <coughs> in advance, which is already from the get-go, from day one, available to all of the tokens that are created on the Cardano platform natively. So, anyway, just an interesting thing to look at. Now, here is one of the big takeaways from the news of the day, and it is... Is, is this. During this recent pullback, I've been talking about how, I remember when it very when it started, saying to the audience, listen, this is an opportunity to buy. What typically happens within the cryptocurrency space is when the market starts to go see a downturn and prices begin to drop a bit, a lot of retail, like regular people, start to panic and they start to sell and they panic sell. And you see it. You see it on the in the Facebook groups. You see it on the social media platforms where there's like, I can't take it anymore. I'm getting out. I'm bailing. What's going on? What's going on with this market? And especially the people that are newer because they haven't gone through and experienced the fact that the cryptocurrency market is volatile. And you see some significant rises and sometimes you'll see some significant declines. And so what happens is what I was saying was what's going to happen is the institutional investors are going to come in. And often, you know, what what happens is these institutional types will throw out all types of FUDs. You know, I'm talking about the JP Morgan t Chase type people, right? They'll, they'll, they'll throw out all this FUD and say, oh, you know, Bitcoin's got this problem and that problem. And all the while they're buying as the retail is selling and they're just selling into the whales. And and so they've just been accumulating. And, and so there's evidence that, that that is exactly what is happening today, right? Bitcoin whales bought the dip as orders for 100K or more hit an all-time high. So... So, so while the price is dropping and retail people are pan retail people are panicking, going, ah, you know, the, the orders of a hundred thousand dollars or more have hit an all-time high. 
There's no shortage of demand for Bitcoin, even at $50,000, as big buyers dwarf small holders in the latest stage of the bull run. Bitcoin whales and institutions alike have made the most of the recent BTC price dip by buying big, data suggests. So I've been stating that this is what happens, and now the data is just... There's two stories that we're going to look at today that are demonstrating that this is the case. In an update on March 9th, on-chain analytics service material indicators noted that buy orders of $100,000 and higher on Binance, the biggest cryptocurrency exchange by volume worldwide, are reaching all-time highs. Big Bitcoin buyers don't hesitate and start contracts to orders worth less than $100,000. Large buyers are more frequent than ever before in Bitcoin's history. Smaller allocations have plummeted in 2021, matching an existing narrative that institutions are scooping up liquidity on exchanges which surfaced during the recent bull run. And this, two things, not only does it show that institutions, the smart money, is buying these dips while retail is getting out, but also this is why this bull run is different than 2017 because this isn't what was happening in 2017. 2017 was fueled by retail investors that were hyped up and excited and FOMO, fear of missing out, FOMOing in to the ICO craze, whereas now these institutional investors are coming in and the buys, the typical buy, the, the number is over $100,000. Incredible. Here's another example. Institutions grab 11,555 Bitcoins on Coinbase at $50,806 right before the recent BTC search. So there you have it. That's what happens. Be the smart money. When these dips occur, do not panic. Do not panic, sell. Do not fear. Do not get out. All right. Got another story for you here today, and that is this for the longest time, people have been talking about when will, if, when and if, will Bitcoin and crypto uh, decorrelate from the stock market, from NASDAQ? Well, that's happened this last week. Bitcoin ducks NASDAQ correlation as price hits two-week high. Bitcoin stepped away from the tailing price trends in the NASDAQ composite, helped by more signs of institutional interest in the cryptocurrency sector. The BTC exchange rate surged 3.96% to $54,489, a two-week high after a report from Goldman Sachs revealed that 40% of its clients now have exposure to cryptocurrencies and 70% of them believe the cost to purchase one Bitcoin would hit $100,000. In 2021, 70% of Goldman Sachs clients who have exposure to cryptocurrency believe it's going to hit $100,000 in 2021. We've got another story here today that illustrates what I'm talking about. Or did I not grab this one? I guess I didn't. But there was a CEO. Oh, here it is. Yes. No, this is not it. CEO of ARK, and I can't remember, oh here it is, Bitcoin will join balanced portfolio with stocks and bonds, ARK Invest CEO. So sort of trailing on the, the report that 70% of Goldman Sachs investors or clients believe that Bitcoin is going to hit $100,000. We're seeing, going back to the, my opening monologue, more and more and more of these naysayers, of these people who were at one point in time flooding and down talking Bitcoin coming to the point now where they're saying okay yeah this is an asset class that's here to stay and it actually is one that we're looking at that we want to get into etc so the ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood believes cryptocurrencies could stabilize and eventually behave like bonds a traditional 60-40 portfolio may look more like 60 equities 20 bonds 20 percent cryptocurrency says Woods Woods profile rose last year with her flagship ARK Innovation ETF which has a large position in Tesla so, the, so, being notorious for its high volatility, investors often associate Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with assets that are higher risk. However, Wood feels that BTC will eventually stabilize and become part of the recommended portfolio for average investors. Typically, those portfolios have consisted of 60% stocks and 40% fixed income or bonds. She believes volatile cryptocurrencies will eventually resemble bonds. So this quote, we think, she says, we think as cryptocurrency becomes a better accepted new asset class, we do think it will behave, actually I would say more like the fixed income markets, believe it or not. 
Very interesting. So I just brought that story to you also to illustrate that, as, as I've been saying, more and more and more institutional investors piling in, coming on. Now, here is another great story about mass adoption. Major Swiss retailers set to debut Bitcoin gift cards. Manor and Valora are leveraging the current crypto hype to sell Bitcoin gift cards in their stores across Switzerland. Switzerland crypto boom. Switzerland's crypto boom has entered another dimension with retailers rolling out Bitcoin vouchers and gift cards. According to Swiss Daily Tagus and Zieger, Man Manor, the country's largest department store chain, is already selling Bitcoin voucher cards in 59 of its branches. Meanwhile, the retail giant Valora will begin selling BTC cards in its kiosk across the country starting in April, on April 1st. Dubbed the crypto now, the Bitcoin vouchers are from the stables of Vardex Suisse, a cryptocurrency financial services firm. Vardex is also a subsidiary of major Swiss crypto exchange, Bitcoin Suisse. Good stuff happening around the world. Decentralized exchange Dodo hacked for $2.1 million. This is something we've been seeing of late. We had uh, Marquette just recently on the Spinance, Bart, Spinance, <laughs> Binance Smart Chain uh, hacked and now Dodo. Popular Dex Dodo Exchange has been hacked for over $2 million. The decentralized exchange Dodo lost $2 million after hackers exploited its crowd pools on March 8th. Dodo announced on Twitter that the recent exploit only targeted the following V2 crowd pools, W S Z O W C R E S E T H A and F U S I. The vast majority of Dodo's liquidity in V1 and V2 pools is safe, according to Dodo. The hackers exploited only the pools created by users. Dodo has disabled the pool creation portal in the meantime to protect newly created crowd pools and will now focus on recovering users' funds with its security partner. The hackers stole $2.1 million, $900,000 in WCRES and $1.15 in USDT. The hack is available for all to see on Etherscan. This DeFi hack comes only five days after Meerkat Finance was exploited for $31 million. The Furo Combo protocol was hacked for $14 million at the end of February. As far as DeFi hacks go, Dodo's $2 million loss represents a relatively low amount, and confidence in the protocol has survived the announcement. The price of the governance token has held stable as well, so it's an interesting thing. Obviously, we're seeing that the smart contracts are exploitable, and that is one of the problems that has been plaguing some of these decentralized exchange. Now, it's not the exchanges that are the exchange aspect or the swapping aspect that is, is troubled. These are the liquidity pools. And so what's happening is these are rug pulls, and there's something within the smart contract that somebody's able to exploit, or they're able to get access to recode the smart contract in some cases and pull out the tokens and this is something that needs to be addressed. There's going to have to be a solution to this because unless something is changed with the way that custody happens within these liquidity pools, something something akin to a a um, you know a a, a third key or a multi sig type of key system where where the where the the money can't be pulled out without the approval of the person that's providing liquidity to that pool right we're going to continue to see this type of thing happen and, and to occur and so so i'm not sure what the solution is going to be to this but it's something to watch and this is an, an area that anyone has to who wants to play in the DeFi liquidity pool yield farming area has got to be very careful about it. be cautious about that okay friends i think that is a wrap for the day the coin highlight of the day was the atari token it's worth looking into. Obviously, this is a company that has huge brand, uh, you know, established establishment from long ago with the nostalgia uh, associated, and they could become one of the big players within the gaming space, without doubt. So check out that token. The symbol is ATRI. If you want to take a look at that. As always, remember, it's a great day to earn more crypto. Appreciate your time. Hope to see you tomorrow. Please be sure to visit blockthrasher.com. Sign up for a membership there. 
and have a great, great day. And remember, it's always a great day to stack more crypto. Talk to you soon. Love y'all. Bye.